Hello Math 140 students, this is your instructor Cindy Enrique and we are going to cover section 12.3 um, Solving systems of nonlinear equations So let's just quickly review what we learned um, towards the beginning of the semester We learned about linear equations and um, better yet a system of linear equations we know that there are three possible um, outcomes that we could have either it was no solution one solution or infinite amount of solutions so that is something that we've already done but now what we're going to do is we're going to take into consideration that now we know how to graph parabola circles and square roots so hopefully you remember that a parabola is either a positive happy parabola or a sad negative parabola with the vertex. We also have a circle which is going to have the center at HK and we also have square roots and our square roots like square root of X if we wanted to see the graph of that well, don't forget that y is equal to the square root of x. So if I were to draw a graph of that, well, let me draw my axis where this is x and this is y, then my graph more or less would look like that. Okay, that's just a quick little review of how to graph your parabolas, your circles, and your square roots. So now let's look at example number one. It says solve the system by graphing. So, okay, let's take into consideration this first equation that we have. We have x plus y is equal to 2. So what we first want to do is identify what type of equation is this. So here are our possibilities. So our possibilities are it's a line, it's a parabola, it's a circle, it's an ellipse, it's a square root. Okay, so in this case, because it has a leading, the degree is one on both the x and the y, then we know it's going to be linear. So to make it linear, then we need to make it into the y equals mx plus b. This is what a line looks like. So I'm going to get the y by itself, and I'm going to do that by subtracting x on both sides. So I'm going to have that y is equal to negative x plus 2. So this is my first equation. So I know that my y-intercept is 2. So here's my y-intercept. I also know that my slope is negative 1. So that means I'm going to go down 1 and to the right one from that y-intercept. So down one to the right one. I also could have gone up one to the left one. Okay, so then that is going to be my line. So there's the first one. Now, for this second equation, I have to think about this a little bit more carefully. I have x is equal to a y squared. Well, usually I like the y on the left-hand side, so I can say y squared is equal to x. And then from here, well, what do I know? I know that this is going to be a type of parabola. And usually the way that we graph this is that we have the y equals to something. So here, if I were to square root both sides, then I would have that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. And of course, we know that this type of graph is going to be a parabola. because of the y squared that we have here, okay? Only one of the variables is a squared. So, I already know what the square root of x looks like, and if you need to 
make some ordered pairs, that's fine. So some ordered pairs, I have zero, zero. I have one, negative one. I also have two, negative two. And I have three, negative three. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't do that right now, did I? I went too fast and furious. Let's think about that again. So I'm going to think about just the square root of x. Well, if I were just to have the square root of x, I know that looks kind of like a root. So if I were trying to get some, ver some ordered pairs for that, I would get 1, 1, okay? And remember, the inside of the square root can't be negative. So let's see what would be the next square. So maybe 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And if we did 9, the square root of 9 would be 3. So now let's think about it if we were to have negative the square root of x. There we go. Well, if we pick, let's say, 0, the square root of 0 times a negative is 0. The square root of 1 times a negative is negative 1. If I were to have 4, I would have negative 2. And 9 would give me a negative 3. So now I have my ordered pairs. So I have 0, 0. I have 1, negative 1. And 1, 1. I have 4, 2 and 4, negative 2. I also have 9, 3, and 9, negative 3. So we can see that the purple and the green line overlap in two specific points. So those two points where they overlap is going to be the solution. So that solution looks like it's 1, 1. And this ordered pair where that solution is going to be 4, negative 2. So your solutions are 1, 1 and 4, negative 2. Okay. And hopefully that made sense. Um, what I was doing is making sure that I get these... Um, values for the square root of x and negative square root of x, or better yet, when x was equal to a y squared. Okay. Now, let's try this again. So, I'm going to look at my first equation. I have my y is equal to negative 1. Well, this one for sure is linear. And this is the type of problem where it's going to be strictly horizontal, right? So my here, my slope is, um, isn't is there. So y to negative 1, well here's my y value, it's at negative 1. So here is my horizontal line. That's that graph, we learned that before, that's your slope of 0. Now, if I'm going to draw this second equation over here, I need to determine what that is. Well, let's think about it. It's a plus, so that's good, in between, and it's equal to something that's not 1. When it's not equal to 1 and I have a plus, then that tells me I'm going to have a circle. So I know that my center is HK. So in this case, I'm going to have 2, 4 as my center. My radius squared is equal to 25. So my radius is equal to a positive 5. So my center is at 2, 4. And I'm going to go 5 in every direction. So I'm going to go to the right 5. I'm going to go to the left 5. I'm going to go down 5. I'm going to go up 5. So these are kind of the points that you're that you're going to have.
Oops, let's try that again. I don't like the way that turned out. Let's try it again. So there we go. So we can see that this circle on this line are going to cross at that particular point right there. So that ordered pair is two, negative one. So my solution is going to be at two, negative one. That's going to be my final answer. For number three, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So for this first equation, I definitely know it's in the y equals mx plus b, so it is a line. So I know my y-intercepts at negative one. My slope is positive one, so I'll go up one over one. Which is the same as going down one, left one. So there is my linear equation. Now, over here, I have y is equal to x squared plus one. So the fact that there's only one variable that's squared tells me it's going to be a parabola, okay? Um, so if you want, you can think of this as your vertex, where you're gonna have the x coordinate of the vertex as negative b over two a. So what I'm going to plug in is, well, my b value is 0 and my a value is 1. So I'm plugging in 0 and a 1, which would just give me a negative 0, which is just 0. So my vertex, I at least know that I have h as 0. Now if I were to plug that in, 0 squared plus 1, well, that would just give me a 1 for my k value. So now I know that my vertex is 0, comma 1. So that would be up here. And now I just have to find some ordered pairs to help me. If I have 0, 1, maybe I'll pick 2 and negative 2. So I'm going to plug this into my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm plugging in these x values into my equation. So I have x, so I'm going to plug in 2, and it's squared plus 1. And that's going to give me a positive 5. So there I go with my positive 5. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but now I'm going to plug in negative 2. So negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, that also gives me a positive 5. So now I can graph this. So I have 0, 1, which is the vertex I already knew. And I have 2, comma, 5. And I have negative 2, comma, 5. So with this parabola and this line, when does this green parabola hit this purple line? Well, it doesn't. So there's no overlap, there's no crossing. So we say that there is, is no solution. The parabola and the linear equation do not cross at any given point. Okay. So again, we're going to do some more graphing. So let's go ahead and, um, oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and graph the first one. So I have my y-intercept at positive 2. My slope tells me to go down 1 to the right 2. I also could have gone up one to the left two. And so that would give me my linear equation. And now for the second equation, it's a square root. So you may want to maybe figure out some values for this. That might be beneficial. So here, I don't know, let's plug in 0. 
and maybe the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Okay, so I would have the square root of 0 minus 2. And I get that as negative 2. Okay, so now let's do it again for 4. So the square root of 4 minus 2, that gives me 0. And now the square root of 9 minus, oops, I didn't write 9, did I? 9, there we go. Minus 2 gives me positive 1. So now I have 1. So now this is what my square root looks like. And I know that usually it has this type of shape. So let's see how this is going to work out. So I have 0, negative 2. I have 4, 0. And I have 9, 1. So my graph looks like this. So the point where it's green and blue is here, and that ordered pair is 4, 0. So then my solution is going to be 4, 0. Okay. So that is how you solve nonlinear equations by graphing. And, well, we also know the substitution method. Here is where we're going to plug in one equation into the other. So let's look at that top equation. So this first equation, I have a 2y squared minus x is equal to 0. So I'm going to plug all of this into my y equation because that is what I have. So I have my 2, and now I'm going to plug in my x plus 1. That squared minus x is equal to 0. So that square tells me I have x plus 1 times my x plus 1. So I know that I'm going to have to FOIL. So when I FOIL, I'm going to have first, outer, inner, last. So I'm going to have an x squared plus x plus x plus 1. So when I combine that, I'm going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So I will have 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus x is equal to 0. So then here I'm going to combine this 4x and that negative x. So I can have 2x squared and it would be a positive 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And to solve for degree 2, we have some options. So we can either, so to solve, you can factor. You can do the quadratic formula. You can even do completing the square. But I'm going to try to do the factor first. Let's see if that works. So if I were to factor, I have a 2x and an x. 2 times 1 would be the only way to get it. Let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, that would be positive. And a negative 1, positive 4, minus 1 is a 3. And I have a negative 2. So this does not factor. It does not factor. So instead, I'm going to try to use the quadratic formula. So for my quadratic formula, I know that I have negative b plus or minus my b squared minus 4ac all over my 2a. And so the values that I have is I have that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to a positive 2. So I'm going to plug in these values. So I have a negative plus or minus So 
so that B value that I'm plugging in is 3, my A value is 2, and my C value is 2. So I know I'm going to have negative 3 plus or minus. And now I'm going to plug in my variables or my values for the for the discriminant, the stuff inside the square root. So I have parentheses 3. squared minus 4 times 2 times 2. So I'm going to get a negative 7 there. And you might be thinking, hey, what happens when you have a negative inside the square root? Well, whenever you have a negative inside the square root, you say no solution or non-real solution. Okay, and that's probably the reason why I didn't factor it because you had some non-real solutions. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I have my y isolated already. It looks like a linear equation, and it looks like I'm going to be plugging it into a circle, equation of a circle. So let's see what happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my equation down. I have 12x squared plus y squared is equal to a positive 36. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my y variable. So I'm going to have my 12 x squared plus, and the y that I'm plugging in is 6x plus 6 squared is equal to 36. So this tells me to write it twice. So now I'm going to have to FOIL. So when I FOIL this, 6 times 6 is 36, and I have an x squared, plus 36x, plus 36x, plus 36. So there are a lot of 36s here. So I have an x squared and an x squared term that I'm going to be adding together. So I have 12 plus 36. That's going to give me 48. And then I have my x's, so 36 plus 36, that gives me a positive 72x. And um, I have plus 36 is equal to 36. So what I can do is I can subtract 36 from both sides. So I'm left with a 48x squared plus 72x is equal to 0. So from here, I can definitely factor because I have x's in both terms and I also have two even numbers. So at the very least, I know that um, two can go into it. I'm gonna save anything bigger. So I know that one times 48, two times 24, three times 16, four times 12, six times eight. Those are all of my factors, or my, my multiples of 48. So now, let's look at my 72. So now I have one times 72, two times 36, three times 24, four times 18, six times 12, and eight times nine. 
So what number do they both share in common? Well, the biggest number that they both have in common is 8. So that's going to be the GCF that I pull out, an 8x to be exact. So I know that 48 divided by 8 is 6, and the 72 divided by 8 is 9. So I'm going to have that 8x is equal to 0, so x is equal to 0. I also have the 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. So 6x is equal to negative 9. So x is equal to negative 9 over 6. So x is equal to negative 3 halves. So this just gives me the ordered, the ordered pair, the x values. So now I need the y values. So now from here, I'm going to say, I'm going to let my x equal to 0. And I need to find y. So let's use the equation where y was equal to 6x plus 6. So if I plug in 0, that's going to give me my value for my y. So 0 times anything is just 0. And then plus 6 would give me 6. So my ordered pair here is 0. 6. So that is one of the answers that I'm going to have. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing but with my other variable or with my other value. So I'm going to have let x equal to negative 3 halves find y. So again I have that y was equal to 6x plus 6. And that value that I'm plugging in is a negative 3 halves. So what would be the value of 6 times my negative 3 halves? Well, you end up getting 6 times negative 3 halves. That's going to give me a negative 9 plus 6. So you end up getting that y is equal to a negative 3. So now you have a negative 3 halves for your x value and negative 3 for your y value. Okay. So now those two values that I found for x have corresponding y values. So now I have the solution to the to the system. So the solution to the system are two ordered pairs, 0, 6, and negative 3 halves, negative 3. And of course, we also have the elimination method, where we're just going to be adding them, you know, straight across. So in this case, if I were to just add them straight across, well, 4 plus 2, that would give me a 6x squared. Negative 9 and positive 9y squared cancels out. And I would have to add 36 plus 18, and that would give me a positive 54. So 54 divided by 6 gives me a positive 9. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. So x is equal to 3, and x is equal to negative 3. So now to find the corresponding y values, I need to plug in each of those. So I'm going to let x equal to 3 so that I can find my y value. So it doesn't matter which equation you use. Um, I'll just go ahead and use the top equation because it's at the top. So I know what value I'm plugging in for my x. So that x value that I'm plugging in is 3. Well, let's see. If I have 4 times 3 squared, so 9 times 4 is 36. And if I were to subtract the 36 from both sides, those cancel. And you're left with a 9y squared is equal to 0. 
So then y squared is equal to zero. So then y is equal to zero. So my answer here would be three comma zero. Now I need to find the solution for when x is equal to negative three. Find my y value. So again, I'll go ahead and use the top equation. So 4x squared plus my 9y squared is equal to 36. So 4 plus my 9y squared is equal to 36. And that value that I'm plugging in for x is negative 3. So 4 times negative 3 squared is still 36. So I know if I were to, to subtract the 36 from both sides, it cancels out. So I have 9y squared is equal to 0, which tells me that y is equal to 0. So I also have negative 3 comma 0. So my two answers that I'm going to have is 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0.